And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Black and Adam Jones. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Just Ask Joey. I'm your host, Joey. This is the only place on the internet where a person who has made mistakes takes things that they've learned and things that they've gone through to help you get through or avoid mistakes in your life. The whole point really is to just avoid the mistakes, but we know that's not always the case. People make mistakes. It's not good, but it's stuff that you have to get through. So hopefully this podcast helps and vlog helps you get through whatever it is that you're going through. So for those of you that follow me on LinkedIn and other social media stuff, you know that I do, you know, this kind of stuff for fun and for practice and everything, because honestly, the ultimate goal of this kind of stuff is to give a TED talk. So those of you that didn't know that, um, but you know that, that what I do is, is uh, media creation. I do you know, go into a company and, and, and help them not only fine tune kind of is what, the, what it is that they do and make sure that, that what they produce and their, and their, that their product is, is strong, but that their advertising is strong. And av- by advertising, I mean, you know, what is the pictures are they taking? What social media sites are they putting up? What content are they creating? Videos, blogs, I mean, all that kind of stuff, all, I'm kind of a one man show. So a question that I, that I've been getting a lot and found the perfect topic to discuss this with is, you know, how do you go in and and decide what a company needs to do? Now, granted, the basic idea of it overall is put out as much content as possible and get on as many sites as possible. Ones that that you see a benefit with, you know, as soon as you if you if you don't see a benefit with something, get off of it unless there are other things about it like Medium. So I use Medium.com, post all my blogs. It's not overly popular for me. I have other sites that I have, you know, 10x, 50x the views on it for whatever reason. But Medium allows me to kind of be in the room with the big wigs, if that makes sense. Gary Vaynerchuk posts there all the time. Um, James Altucher posts there all the time. Chase Jarvis posts there. And then there's all these other companies that pick up um, stories and then rebroad like kind of like rebroadcast them on their sites. So that's you know I'm it's like hanging out in the VIP section. That's how I feel of it. I'm a small I'm a real small fish in the VIP section, but it works for me. So the question that I got was you know how do you create media and how do you create like a marketing strategy for companies and for businesses? And I thought the perfect way to kind of show at least like my thought process and ideas that I have would be to kind of talk through what I would do if I were creating the media and the marketing for Metallica's new album. For those of you that don't know, I'm a gigantic Metallica fan. I've been a huge fan since I was like 11. Been to pretty much every concert that they've had, at least in the Bay Area, since I was 11, so the last 26 years. In high school, my whole room was completely surrounded with Metallica pictures. I would come home and play guitar for hours and hours and I would just go through their albums and pretend I was playing live. Before I even had a guitar, I I took a a huge cardboard box and cut out quote unquote James Hetfield guitar, the this one right here. And I would pretend I was playing guitar. I was playing Enter Sandman with them live. I was playing Master of Puppets with them live and and you know kind of grown up and evolved I feel like there's like a like as I'm getting older and evolving, they're getting older and evolving, and the and the fact that they share so much about their story with their documentaries, like a year and a half in the life of Metallica, and uh, some kind of monster, you just really get to see like how you know even though they're like they, these metal icons, these music juggernauts, that they you know they have their struggles and they have their issues and they have to deal with them too, and and I feel like I've kind of grown up with them even though they're older than me. Does that make sense? So, so the question of the day, just to kind of tie that all together, put a bow on that, is um, how would I market Metallica's new album? I'm calling it, you know, marketing Metallica's new metal masterpiece. I, I know it's going to be a masterpiece, so I, I haven't heard it. I don't know anything about it. I don't have any ties to Metallica, even though I would love to, I'd love to work for them. But I, I know it's going to be good. Everything they put out is good. Even if it's, it doesn't fit with what you'd expect, it's still good. That's that's what they do. They write great stuff 
and they're they're very innovative with their music they're innovative with their the technology that they use and this is designed to kind of expand what they already do they already do they already do things very very well they have millions and millions and millions of followers they have hundreds of millions of views of all their things that they put out but this is like okay technology is changing fast the app world is changing fast the marketing is changing fast this is like if 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 i were to help with with them with their marketing of the new album this is what i would do okay so number 1 Thing that they're doing really well right now with the 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 birthdays and the the remix and remastering of Kill 'Em All and Ride the Lightning is they're doing fan interactions. One thing they've been doing this last week is send us your picture, send a picture of you with with the album. If it's cool, if it's if it's high quality, we'll retweet it. Nothing is more thrilling to a fan than somebody who is too big to give a shit actually give a shit about what you put out for Metallica to like something that you did enough to retweet it will probably be one of the coolest things that happens in their fans life I know that if Metallica were to listen to this I would shit my pants I know if Metallica were to say hey we like your ideas why don't you come work with us my freaking head would blow up so I probably wouldn't even be able to work with them because I would be dead I would have spontaneously combusted um when I put out something and like Gary Vaynerchuk likes it or Brian Koppelman likes it, it's it it like it means a ton. And I know that they know that it means a ton, but I don't know if they know how much. Like it really like like it makes your whole day when like you put out something and Chase Jarvis likes it and you put out something and James Altucher likes it or man or one of them follows you. Holy crap. That's that's huge. So the fan interaction thing that they're doing is huge. Um, one thing that I would do to expand on what they're doing already is whatever announcements that they have between now and the album release, which is, you know, they're talking October, November, at least by the end of the year. Um, I would give fans an opportunity to share kind of their reaction to it and then post the cool reactions. Ask fans questions. Would What would be a cool... If you were to design the album, how, what album cover would you design? If you were to name the album, what what would you call it? If you were to design an alternative concert poster for this concert we have coming up, what would it look like? Things like that. Just things where you can take any experience that a fan would have with a band and then ask them to be able to share the experience would be huge. And the the idea being that the more you have the fans sharing, the more that you're going to be trending. And the more you're trending, the more you're on, um, you're in a kind of a high profile with Twitter, with you know Instagram, with Facebook, YouTube. The more you're trending, the better, obviously, because it's like it's almost like free advertising. But in order to be trending, you have to be inter- you either have to be coming out with new news or have like a constant stream of fans sharing. So if fans are hashtagging Metallica for like two months for the album comes out, that's they're going to be trending. If whatever the name, the title of the album is, hashtag whatever the title of the album is, that should be trending. Like th- that should be the goal really on social media is to be trending for for really for months, as much as you can for months. And one huge way to do that is fan interaction. Number two, I would do a daily vlog, a la Casey Neistat, but for tours only. I can see it could get really daunting if they're, you know, whatever. So, so the length of the tour is, you know, let's say it's six months, world tour, six, you know, first part is six months. I know they're going to tour for like years, but the first part of the tour is six months. You have a daily vlog every single day for six months. So you guys wake up tomorrow, you see what happened today, that kind of a thing, like just like Casey Neistat does. Um, the way to warm up to that is Metallica has a huge show in Minneapolis uh, in August, and they have a huge show in New York in September. It's a couple of days before that, as things are getting ready, you have, you know, the daily vlogs and I'm talking like five or 10 minutes, you know, like eight minutes to 15 minutes, short, sweet, informative action-packed, whatever. So you have like three or four days before the concert and then you have the concert end of vlogs. Then September comes up, you're in New York, three or four days before the concert, showing the prep, three or four blogs, concert, end of vlog. And then it's like, okay, so this new like YouTube sh- quote unquote show is, you know, Metallica, the Metallica tour vlog, whatever, the daily, the daily met, the daily met, daily Metallica. I don't know, something like that. And then they have a vlog every single day. And the fan interaction for that would be freaking amazing because everybody would be able to log onto YouTube knowing that something's going to come out that next day and boom, you get to see what happened with Metallica backstage, what it's like to be at that stadium or what it's like to be at that arena, what it's like to be in the midst of Metallica 
the next day. I think that would be that would be a huge. It would be all. I would love it. It would be awesome. Number three, Snapchat. Metallica Snapchat is horrible for as big as they are, and you know the, the Instagram is pretty cool. The Twitter is much better. You know, doing the, doing the sharing. The Facebook's cool, but their Snapchat sucks ass. It's awful. When they did the the record store day in Berkeley a couple months ago, there was like two snaps. There was like a snap of like the sound check, and then there was like a snap from the side of the stage. That's it. Consider, think about all the stuff that's going on around Metallica, around that event, the fan interaction. I mean, there's so much stuff that you could have, there's so much content that could have been created with that with Snapchat. And they just, I think they kind of crapped the bed on it. So Snapchat, the crap out of everything. There was, when I went to see my first Metallica concert, 90, 91, 92, early 92, something like that. It was for the Black Album. They weren't touring with anybody. So instead of an opener, they had a video. But bookending those, that video was backstage access. They had a microphone, they had a video camera, and they were broadcasting to the arena things that were going on backstage. You can do that with Snapchat every single show. That would be awesome. You basically give access. There's only 30,000 people, 40,000 people that are going to actually be at the show, but there's millions and millions and millions of people that would love to be at the show. So give them a chance to be vicariously there with you. And Snapchat your ass off. Snapchat everything. Hire somebody to be a Snapchatter and a and a videographer. It could be me, um, but but focus on that because you can take the Snapchat stuff and share it everywhere. You can take, you know, you can take five second clips of the new album before it comes out and do. I'm assuming let's say there'll be like ten songs, maybe twelve songs at the most. They usually keep the the songs are long, albums kind of short numbers wise. Snap five seconds of each song. Just do that. Just say on Twitter, go, hey, you guys, we're going to snap five seconds of each song. Better sign up for Snapchat or you're not going to be able to hear it. And then with screenshots on Snapchat and shareability on Snapchat, you tell them to share stuff you want them to share. You tell them to screenshot your stuff you want them to share. And then it just goes, boom, and it's a Metallica wildfire all over social media. Snapchat is the way to go. It can be like the hub of like everything that you guys put out. Allow each Metallica member to have um, like a snap week. Like this week it's going to be Lars. This week it's going to be Kirk, whatever. And then they get to show just kind of what it's like to be the guitarist of Metallica, what it's like to be the drummer of Metallica for a week. And they just snap crap the whole day. And you have a whole week of James or a whole week of, of Rob. Um, then maybe if there's some like downtime, you have you pass it around to the people that work for like the, the, the Metallica club. They get to work at HQ. They're working with the guys pretty closely. They, they, um, they have better access to those guys than probably anybody else in the world kind of show what it's like to be a part of the, the the Metallica club there's so much there's so much content around what you can put out because it's Metallica and they're 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 a machine and they're a business there's so many people that you could have access to that maybe it's just somebody who does x y or z but that x y or z is something that like millions of people would die to be able to work for Metallica and just give them the chance to kind of see what that's what that's like podcasts this is huge. Forget the magazines. I mean, except for like the Rolling Stones and like newspaper, like the really big ones. Forget all that. Forget all the magazine crap. Magazines are dead. There's some online stuff, but hit up podcasts. Hit up the moment with Brian Koppelman. Hit up the Tim Ferriss show. Hit up the uh, the Gary V show, the James Altucher show, the Art of Charm, the Joe Rogan experience, WTF with Mark Marin, like just hit those that have just millions and millions and millions of listeners that do amazing interviews, some longer than other ones, and and just just sit down one day, make some phone calls. You'll have millions of people at one time. Podcasts are the absolute way to go. Maybe find some some vloggers to put out. Like bring Casey Neistat out to hang out with you for for a couple days. He would do a, a freaking amazing video. And he gets millions of people to watch this stuff every single day. Get a get a really popular blogger to go out. Maybe maybe it's me. Maybe I can go out and I can interview with you. Another thing to get onto is live streaming. They're already doing a great job of live streaming. I was able to watch the the night before at AT and T Park in San Francisco before the Super Bowl. I was able to watch the uh, I was able to watch the Record Store Day performance in Berkeley. These are also two shows that one of my good buddies was front row at. I hate you, but I was able to see them. I was able to see it live, and 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 live's amazing. I'm experiencing it the same time you're experiencing it, even though I'm not there. It's still incredible. It's still exciting. Um, what I would do is is combine the live streaming with what they did 
a couple albums ago. When they released the St. Anger CD, they also released a DVD with it. Um, the DVD was all the songs that were on the CD, but performed live at HQ, you know, high quality, you know, video and sound and everything. It sounded awesome. I probably watched that more than I listened to the album. Like, that's how cool it was. What I think they should do is they should take the live streaming that they're doing and they should take the idea of the St. Anger um, DVD and put it together. And the day before the album comes out or the day the album comes out or the day after the album comes out or whatever, they do a live show, whether it's at HQ or the Warfield in San Francisco or the Fillmore in San Francisco. It can be at my house if they want. And then do the whole album live. I think that would be freaking awesome. I think fans would go bananas for it so live streaming St. Anger put it together live stream the whole album live for people to watch on on Facebook on Twitter on whatever I'm sure Snapchat will probably get into that you know eventually where they do the live streaming thing do it live use YouTube it doesn't matter the fans would go nuts for that I would take the whole catalog so far I know there's gonna be an addition take the whole catalog and throw it on to musically Young fans are inundated with all these different apps and all these different sites and all these different things all the time. Musically is where new young listeners they are. It millions of, of kids are on this. If Metallica says they're on it, it's gonna draw a bunch the older crowd to musically musically the older crowd is gonna jump on all the songs and start doing like lip syncing the stuff to it and start making these cool videos the kids are gonna see it they're gonna just go these songs are awesome and boom you have a whole new audience you have the whole next generation of metallica fans right there with musically get on musically maybe release every couple weeks release an album maybe it's kill them all one week maybe it's injustice for all the next week and have the people go through and create videos and songs and re you can repost them everywhere youtube facebook wherever wherever they can they can host them they can go and just latch onto like a totally new audience then when the album drops all you have all these new fans that have been interacting with the music in a really unique and fun way for months and boom new album netflix get all the old videos onto netflix in the months coming up to the album release so i'm talking like cliff them all i'm talking uh Cunning stunts, binge and purge, all the way up to through the never. Like just put everything up there. Let people, let older fans like me fall in love with you guys all over again. Let new fans go, oh, this is trending. What's this? I'm gonna check out Metallica. That's badass. I need to go see them in concert. I need to buy this new CD. Let people just let people binge on Metallica. Just throw everything onto Netflix. Let people binge. Let people just get absorbed in 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 kind of the history of Metallica and everything that they've been doing and and take advantage of 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 binge watching take advantage of people just sitting on their ass in front of Netflix put Metallica in front of them let them sit on their ass and watch Metallica when they're done watching Orange is a New Black when they're done watching I don't know what else is on there I don't know what, I really don't know what else is on there I don't binge watch so yeah Netflix is a platform that is, needs to be used with this so Metallica does so many good things already like I really think that they couldn't say, they don't have to say anything. It could just put out an album and it'll be number one. It's freaking Metallica. They got millions of followers. They have millions of fans. They can sell out stadiums like that. They headline the biggest shows around the world. There's really nothing that they need to do. But they also seem like a band that is very willing to jump into new things and try new things. And, and, and they want to reach a bigger audience. They know they have a huge audience. They know how popular they are, but they know that there are millions of people that haven't, gotten the chance to experience what Metallica does and they seem to be very open to that so one I hope you guys enjoy this kind of hearing kind of where my brain works when I'm thinking of, of marketing ideas and media creation ideas and I, I hope that um, the James Lars Kirk or Rob are listening to this also and you would like me to come do this stuff for you. That would be very nice also. If you have any other questions about this, if you have any other questions about marketing, you want me to you want to ask me some questions about your company specifically or your website specifically and how I can help you, hit me up on Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever. Find me, email me, and I'll be happy to get back to you. And it will either be another question on a on another episode of Just Gas Joey, or it will be just, you know, between me, you and me, and I can just help you out one on one. Either way, I'm here to help. Um I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you soon. And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Just go, go.